Good morning. Welcome to worship. We are glad that you are tuning in with us. About a little over two years ago, both Faith and St. James uh, voted to extend a call to me as their shared pastor. And then COVID hit and uh, doing any formal recognition of this call was uh, put to the side. But a installation date has finally now been set and that will be Sunday, October 17th. We will gather together in worship at 10 a.m for an installation service and celebration of this new call uh, that's now almost two years old. And then there will be a lunch to follow here at St. James. Uh, we would like people to sign up for the lunch so we know how many to plan for. Again, that is Sunday, October 17th at 10 a.m. here at St. James. We begin our worship this morning with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the 11th chapter of Numbers. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, if only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions and the garlic, but now our strength is dried up and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servants so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them? That you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a suckling child to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give to all this people? For they come weeping to me and say, Give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting, and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered seventy elders of the people, and placed them all around the tent. <clears throat> then the Lord came down in the cloud, and spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him, and put it on the seventy elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad, and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. 
and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read verses from Psalm 19. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then I shall be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. A reading from the fifth chapter of James. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if any among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back the, a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Cut it off. 
It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And I'm struck every time that we 
do this ritual as our students begin their competition, I'm struck that we might be scattered throughout those bleachers. We might be from all different places. We may not know one another. Some of us may not like each other, may not get along with one another. We might be sitting far apart. But in that moment, as we stand up and cheer on our young people, we become one. We are one in name as the parents, the supporters of the Big Orange Pride, one in cause, one in spirit. Now this is just a high school marching band, a music group. It's just a local competition, and even when we make it all the way to state, if we make it this year, even in those things, it's, it's a minor thing in the scope of life, in the scope of what really matters for the whole entire survival of the people of this world. But think for a moment about what Jesus is explaining this morning to John, his disciple. Think about that connection, the cause that Jesus is there to bring to this world. Think about the unity that he is trying to get across to John and the other disciples as he describes what it means to care for all, for that, that little child who still sits in the midst of the group. Jesus is speaking of this unity that we are all one in his name. As we go out into the world, as those around them went out to minister in his name, in the name of Jesus Christ. This activity that he is witnessing in that place, this activity that we continue today, this, this has eternal, everlasting implications. This is a community that extends far beyond time and space. This is a community of God's people of all times and places. That's who we are in these days. That's who we come to be as we gather together in worship, both physically in our worship spaces and even virtually as we gather across the streams, as we gather across technology. That's who we are together as followers of Jesus Christ. Each and every one of us who claim Jesus as Savior, who serve as disciples. We may be different. We may have different ways of approaching the words of Jesus. We may pray in different manners or praise God in different ways. We may have different specific practices and and how we lift up our voices in song, or what songs we choose to use. We may come from different backgrounds, speak different languages. But in Jesus, in his name, as we claim the name of Christ, we are one. One together across denominations, across understandings. We are one in Christ. Now that's pretty daunting when we think about the conflicts that have occurred throughout the ages, when we think about the ways that, that we have mistreated and hurt one another and hurt other people in the name of Christ. That's a daunting reality that causes us to reflect deeply on choices that we've made, and choices we continue to make. We know that there are times when people have been harmed as we've claimed that name of Christ. 
We know that even today, as we go out to live and serve as disciples, we sin, we fall short, we make mistakes, we, we mess up. We know that that path of discipleship can be a difficult one. That there are times when we aren't able to lift up or to live up to the ways that Jesus asks us to live. And Jesus continues to explain that to those disciples gathered around him. As he talks about the dangers of putting stumbling blocks in front of others of those things that we might do purposefully or inadvertently. The dangers of what that might be. And he uses these, these images that seem so extreme. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. If your eyes cause you to sin. It seems so extreme. But he wants us to understand the significance of how that life of faith can impact others. And how we are called to live continually, intentionally. But in the midst of it, we're also called to trust in Jesus. To trust in his grace, in his love and forgiveness that, that surrounds us each and every day in the midst of that serving. Close to 20 years ago, I had knee surgery to repair a torn ACL in my knee. And as part of that surgery, I went through six months of physical therapy. In that first day in the hospital, and, and for eight weeks, I was not allowed to put weight, full weight, on that leg. And so I had to rely on crutches, and I had to rely on others to provide some safety for me. In those, that first day in the hospital, before they would even let me go home, I had to go through some occupational and physical therapy to make sure that I knew how to properly move. I remember them having to put that gate belt around my waist as I maneuvered on my crutches and as I practiced going up and down those stairs that were in that therapy room so that I could show them that I knew how to move properly. Especially because in my house, we had 12 stairs to get from the main floor up to where the shower and bathroom were. I remember that sense of comfort that that belt gave me as that physical therapist in the hospital held on to the back of it as I moved. I knew as I practiced again and again with those crutches that if something happened, if I stumbled, that therapist had me. The therapist would be there to catch me if I were to fall. I think about that image of discipleship, of taking those steps, of practicing again and again, of learning and developing habits, of going out to serve in ways that sometimes might frighten us, that might intimidate us, those ways that might excite and energize us, but still might be new. I think about those times when we might stumble. And then I think about that image of one holding that belt, that safety on me. That's what Jesus promises us. That even as we go out to serve, even as we live in that life of discipleship, that someone is there, Jesus is there to, to hold on, to protect, to catch us. Because we know the, what it means to serve. We know the power of our witness 
We know how important it is to share that love of Jesus with others. So we hear these words today. We trust in this abundant, wonderful Church of God that extends across the nations, across all time and space. We trust that even in our differences and in our diversity and variety, we are one in the name of Jesus Christ. And we trust that even as we stumble, that Jesus is there to catch us, to forgive us, to help us learn, and to love us. We trust that we go out to serve as that follower of Christ, as those disciples. We go out to serve and to bear his name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us confess our faith together using the word of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We pray for the church and its ministry. Bless the newly baptized and encourage them in their journey of faith. Sustain all members of the body of Christ in lives of prayer, service, and worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for natural wonders of your creation. Restore damaged forests, waterways, and natural habitats, and lead us to be good stewards of what you have provided. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in authority. Give them wise minds and compassionate hearts. Strengthen in them a desire to protect the vulnerable and care for those underserved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are struggling with cancer, dementia, or any other disease. Provide them with peace and resilience for the days ahead. Especially we pray for Pastor Fritz, Deborah, Ken, Kay, and Rocky, and those we name in our hearts. Sustain caregivers with energy and patience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the worship leaders of this congregation, musicians, readers, and ministry assistants. Bless us through their ministry and grant them the passion to continue in their service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all your saints, those we have loved and known, and those from every time and place. We pray for those who grieve, especially the family and friends of Tina, Fritz, and Jean. Continue to guide us by their example and reassure us of your promised salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of this peace with those among you. Resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. 
Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to share communion there among yourselves, trusting that wherever God is, there the Lord has present, is present. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.